right, today we talk about uh, mismanagement. The camera good? Yeah. All right, talk about mismanagement, mismanagement. Um, I got to first admit that I'm, I didn't drop the ball uh, as far as, as managing, as far as being the manager and the steward of um, of resources, of, of sheep or of people. Um, and so just, you know what I'm saying, to expound on... Um, management skills, management assets, uh, especially with dealing with the kingdom. Um, I was speaking with another brother from another organization and uh, he was asking me about certain, you know what I'm saying, certain things, certain ordeals, how I handle certain things. Um, and we were probably in the same boat, just being, just being, uh, um, being a fairly new camp. There are, hold on one second. There are certain things that um that you just have to experience, you know what I'm saying, to to learn from these certain things. And being that I've never came out of a camp. Um and um I think that brother also he came out of a camp, but it really was um pretty much just meeting majority of camps is just meeting on the streets uh teaching maybe a phone call um that's pretty much all, all that's pretty much the all the dealings within um uh, that camp we meet on the streets at this time um and we 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 do a class maybe a midweek class over the phone but ain't a lot of interaction so when something really does happen it has to be pretty much you know drastic for that situation to be dealt with if we're not around each other all the time. During Tabernacle, we was able to see, um, kind of see a lot of things, kind of kind of read um, each other a little better, kind of see exactly. Um, people let their guard down a little bit, you know what I'm saying, and um, kind of bonded a little better with each other. But with the bonding, you also see um, certain things that we can, um, we can tighten up on. And... Um, so throughout the week, I'm going to be doing certain videos of things that I just seen pop up or that I seen people mention um, that spur certain topics um, that I need to be bringing out. So those videos will be dropping periodically through the week. They'll be short, little 10 minute videos, all things we can tighten up on, all things we can evaluate ourselves on. But the first is mismanagement. And, I, and that's the first going to be evaluation of myself. You feel what I'm saying? I'm dropping the ball on myself on mismanagement. All right, so we'll do a class on that. And this ain't the first time I've done this class. Um, and I have tried to draw the strings up, and then I got lax. Got lax on it. Um, for, you know what I'm saying, for whatever, whatever the reason was. Uh, just like Saul, trimming your ways for love. Probably be one of the main reasons. Um... But at the end of the day, even with me talking with the uh, other elder, you know what I'm saying? You, 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 it has to be a balance between you conserving your emotions and your 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 mental um, your mental stability and, and 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 peace of mind with you know what I'm saying. Also juggling you know what I'm saying the emotional stability of another person. Um, but at the same time, you know what I'm saying. Correction got to be brought out. Rebuke got to be brought out. And if it doesn't get brought out, then we don't build up a chin for that rebuke and that correction. So if we rarely telling each other, rarely correcting each other, rarely uh, reproving each other, then it's going to be a harsh when you first hear it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When you initially and you're doing it, it builds up, a, um, it builds up, you know, a chin for the rebuke or for the reproof. Tolerance. But if we don't, huh? It builds up the tolerance for it, where it's not really, you know what I'm saying, Sean, like, oh, man, I can't believe he said, talk to him like that. You know what I'm saying? Instead, you just go ahead and do, you know what I'm saying, what was said. But if you get laxed on it, then it becomes, you know what I'm saying, where it's kind of intolerable and brothers get in their feelings, and leave, brother. exactly, and leave, and et cetera, on just on, on a few words, you know what I'm saying? Uh, on correction. Right. On a few words that was bringing correction. And so, uh, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, I take the first hit on that, of course. Uh, what is the opposite of mismanagement? Um, 
perfection, achievement, success, accuracy, obedience, behavior, strength, cor correctness, right, and honesty. All right. And we want all those things. Those are our characteristics that we all want uh, to have, not only just as a camp, but also in our personal lives and our personal successes and our personal uh, endeavors. Perfection, achievement, success, accuracy, obedience, behavior, strength. When you have obedience, you can pretty much, pre you know, you can pretty much say what you're going to do. If you do the calculations on it, you say, okay, well, this A, B is going to get me to C, D. It's, all I got to do is, is, is align myself and be obedient to it. If, if Or if I say I can cut this thing out and save this amount of money, I see that I'm doing this and um, I can, you know, I can stop eating at McDonald's to save, you know what I'm saying, $5, $5 a week. I know within uh, 10 weeks I have, you know what I'm saying, uh, 10 weeks I have $50 and I can do something else, etc. You know what I'm saying? It, it, but, you know, even to a greater extent, even to a um, more discipline uh, with that, but just on the lowest tier. You kind of know what you can do and then you'll know that okay i can go buy this with this 50 dollars if i just stop eating at mcdonald's once a week uh in the beginning let's go to genesis uh one Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And it was so. Drop down to verse 20 for me. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. The and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Uh, oh, 20. I'm sorry. And, yeah, 20 and then drop down to 24. You was right. Okay. Verse 24. We're going to read 24 and 25. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. All right, and the Most High seen it was good. We just brought this out to show the creation process and the Most High managing that creation process and through, you know what I'm saying, of course, through your house shop. But um, everything having its place, everything being brought into order, all right? The cattle after itself, the you know what I'm saying, the herb yield the seed and the seed being within itself. And everything being brought. That's why I'm saying that that uh that whole big bang theory. Who is that? Indigo, that brother indigo who was talking to. Um you, you just can't you can't just think that this thing just got organized on its own, that the big bang theory happened and then, you know what I'm saying, the bees just happened to pollinate the tree and the tree happened to give back to this and then the, you know what I'm saying, you have this whole uh system around nature that supplies food to us and we give back and etc that don't just happen all of that was organized all of that was managed uh by the most high uh the most high owns and we just manage uh psalms 24 This is the book of Psalms, chapter 24 and verse 1. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. It said the earth is the most highest and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell in. Even us, we belong to the most high. Everything belongs to him. All right, we can't, we can't own anything. <clears throat> Ain't nothing really off. Everything 
uh, belongs to the Most High. Let's look at Psalms 89. And we're just stewards of that. Whatever he allots us to, to, to manage, all we are are managers. All we are are um, like CEOs. But we're not the owners. <clears throat> this is the book of Psalms, chapter 89 and verse 11. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine. As for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. All right, thou hast founded them, the world is his, and the fullness thereof. All right, just like uh, if you're CEO of McDonald's, you still ain't McDonald's. Uh, you, you, you're not a McDonald. You're just a CEO. Um, you're just a chief operating officer. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 10 and uh, 26. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 26. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It says, for the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. He pretty much quoting the same thing from the Psalms. Uh, Exodus 19, 5. And all these precepts are just pretty much the exact same thing. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 19, and verse 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Yeah, all right, so then you will be a peculiar people above all people, for the earth is mine. And so when we, before we read the Deuteronomy 7, 6, we have to understand the Exodus 19 and uh, 5. If we obey the voice of the Most High and His covenant, we'll become that peculiar people above all nations. Keep going on that. Six. Yeah, 6. Come. Verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests uh -huh. and, a holy, uh, and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And then you should be a kingdom of priests. A set apart nation. All right, First Corinthians fourteen, verse thirty three. Fourteen thirty three, yeah, I'm there. This is the book of uh First Corinthians chapter fourteen and verse thirty three. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. All right, it says the Most High is not the author of confusion. All right, and confusion is the word akatastasia, um, instability, a state of disorder, disturbance, confusion. Our better translation would be, uh, for God is not the author of disorder. But peace, um, but a peace as in all the churches. And so you see in the beginning how he put everything in order when the earth was void. Um, he's not the author of things that are disorder. Everything got to be done uh, decently and in order. And so he's not the, the author of things that are disorder. You see that if you go down to verse 40, um, the author, of, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let all things be done decently and in order. Um, so, you know what I'm saying? Just a better translation for that 33 is he's not the author of disorder. So when things are disorderly, it's not of the Most High. All right? It's not of the Most High. It's not in the spirit of the Most High. Adam's mismanagement. Let's go to Gen back to Genesis. 126. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 26. And God said, Let us make man in our image, 
after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. All right, so he had dominion. He had dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle, etc. Every creeping thing. And um, with his mismanage, um, end up coming to fall. And even now, with our mismanage of um, the, the fowls of the air, the sea, etc., we see this great climate change that has happened um, because of mismanagement. You know what I'm saying? Mismanagement of the earth, of these natural resources. Um, I think they even put like a time clock on a building in New York right now. It's like seven years. You got like seven years, 26 days or something like that. Um, if we do not make the drastic changes uh, to change the climate, then it's going to be, you know what I'm saying, catastrophic, you know what I'm saying, fires, etc. Um, but they actually put a time stamp on that where we need to make these changes. We see those fires in um, on the West Coast getting worse and worse every year. The earthquakes, um, the, the hurricanes getting closer and closer on the banks, you know what I'm saying? We used to have to worry um, anything about no hurricane in Georgia. Uh, maybe some tornadoes, even earthquakes, you know what I'm saying? Even earthquakes are getting more, becoming in more areas where, um, diverse, places. diverse places where, you know what I'm saying? They didn't really used to happen, but now they happen. And, you know, of course, these are all signs of the times. And, but this is also a sign of mismanagement, of mismanagement. Uh, we must learn to manage to receive. Alright, so the Most High is not going to give you more till you learn how to manage what you already have. If you're not managing correctly what you have, He's not going to give you anything else. And sometimes we wonder why we stuck in certain situations, uh, financially, uh, spiritually. Um, and it's, it's, it's usually due to bad mismanagement. You, you really some most times you have um, the tools and the resources to get to where you need to go um, but it's just due to bad management um, you're not getting there you know what I'm saying we may want to uh, fix our credit we may want to you know what I'm saying uh, buy this new vehicle buy a house etc um, and we may have the reason we may not feel like we do you know what I'm saying because of the lifestyle that we live in now but um, if we go back and reevaluate, we can see and pull some holes in and um, try to tie some things together where we can have those. Re and then we we'll realize, you know what, I am mismanaging some of my resources and some of my time. You know what I'm saying? Because everything counts, especially when you're trying to go to another level. Everything counts. Everything. You know what I'm saying? So you don't want to mismanage um any of those things. So we must learn how to manage to receive from the most high. Let's look at Proverbs 27, 23. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 23. Be thou diligent to know the state of thy flocks, uh -huh. and look well to thy herds. For riches are not forever, and doeth the crown endure to every generation. And doeth the crown endure for every generation? All right, riches do not last forever. Be diligent to know the state of your flocks. And the state of your flocks is your resources. You know what I'm saying? And as people, you know what I'm saying, especially being a leader, knowing the state of your flock. But also we did use that as, you know what I'm saying, that was one of our main resources. We needed to understand uh, the state of those resources, the state of our flock. You know what I'm saying? Keep going. For hay appeareth and the tender grass showeth itself. And herbs of the mountains are gathered. The lambs are for thy clothing, and the goats are the price of the field. And thou shalt have goats. Thou shalt have goats' milk enough for thy food, for the food of thy household, and for the maintenance for thy maidens. And for the maintenance of thy maidens, um, of thy maidens, you will have these things if you diligently seek out the state of your flock. You know what I'm saying? The state of your resources. Your flock is pretty much your resource. You understand the state of your flock and you diligently look into that, then you will make that will make sure that you have enough 
uh, goat's milk, you know what I'm saying? You have enough uh, the, the lambs for the clothing and you have enough, you know what I'm saying, even for the maintenance of your servants and your, and your, and your handmaids. But it also, you know what I'm saying, can, it twofold, also understanding the state of, in leadership, understanding the state of, you know what I'm saying, the people that you are leading also. Uh, don't waste resources. John 6 and 12, we'll see good management. We'll see example of good management in John 6 and 12. This is the book of John, chapter 6 and verse 12. All right, just right in doing the, the five loaves in the, in, the, in the two fish. When they were filled, he, sa he said unto the disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. All right, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Keep going. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remain over and above unto them that had eaten. All right, and from those five loaves, which remained it after feeding the 5,000, um, uh, 12 baskets, 12 baskets of fragments. But he didn't waste those fragments. He collected those fragments and kept them, right? Even though it was, he could have made more and more bread, he still did not waste uh that bread he made sure to gather it that nothing be lost that nothing be lost now let's look at mismanagement in luke chapter 15 and verse 13. And it's just going into the um, the prodigal son. This is the book of Luke, chapter 15 and verse 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted and there wasted his substance. And there he wasted his substance. He wasted his inheritance. Keep going. With riotous living. Uh-huh. And when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in that land. What is righteous living? Reckless. I take that. And when he but was it was it fun? Possibly. Probably having a ball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he and was probably having a ball, like we all want to do. Splurge. Yeah, we all want to. We we want to have a ball. We want to. We want to splurge. Want to ball out. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. But you got to be mindful of uh, that. It, it could because it can be mismanaged. It can be a, a form of mismanagement. Um, you know what I'm saying. It's it's cool to kick the bobo, but um, when it's a continual level of righteous living, uh, righteous living, then it can. It's definitely a form of mismanagement. A good example of that. Is when you get paid weekly and you went Wednesday, yeah, you got like a hundred dollars left, yeah. And you see something that you want, you dig, you know, you got money coming on on Friday, so you go ahead and ball out because you know it's gonna be replenished. But in actuality, if you could stack that and, and re, uh, 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 um, repress, uh, suppress that, if that, that splurging urge, right. Then you'll be a hundred dollars up. You'll be a hundred dollars up. Imagine it. Watch this now. I, I I remember days of living. I'm talking about years of this generation. I ain't gonna say gener decades of it though. Of living, um, getting down. You know, say you getting paid biweekly. All right, and so going going a week on twenty dollars. Oh yeah. And oh, made yeah. it. And made it. And anyway. made it. Oh, yeah. Now imagine if you just disciplined to go those other, you know what I'm saying, you did a month on the 20, you know what I'm saying, the $20 a week, you know what I'm saying, and and did and, and played it like that and then stacked the bread, you would be able to get to, you know what I'm saying. And so so that's again just evaluating that you do have the resources. Absolutely. Um 
it's oh. just it's just a form of mismanagement. It's called delayed gratification. Delayed gratification. Huh. Delayed gratification. And it, and it takes it takes um it takes some discipline, man. It takes some discipline. It's something that's got to be built up. But um it's when we we force it when it's forced when the hands forced on us because of our righteous living because we living like the prodigal son, uh, we end up getting through it. You end up getting through it, man. You end up dealing with those noodles. You find yeah. new ways. You get creative. Yeah. Getting that loaf of bread, <laughs> bread and that cheese. Right. You get creative, yeah. and then you know what I'm saying once you get to a certain stack, then you can Some have you. Check come out after you delay. You go right there. To Red lobster somewhere and yeah. it off. You spend yeah. it all, man. I'm gonna pull that precept too, because the precept is a rock that um that that goes into that um how one forget of um forget of his hunger, you know what I'm saying? Once once he once he once he like I said, once he gets that check or once he gets that money. Um I find that precept. I think it's like Ciroc 30 20, 32 or something like that. Um, are we finished here? No, nah, keep Verse going. 14. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began, and he began to be in want. And he began to be in want. Come on, from that mighty famine. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. All right, and he sent him into the fields to feed swine. So this prodigal son, uh. Be due to his righteous living, due to his mismanagement, he ends up in a country uh, sold to his citizens feeding pigs. All right. And sometimes I go back and I think I used to think about how much money I wasted Woo. on, you know, what I'm saying on smoking, just smoking alone. I know I don't smoke a house and a half. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, but for real very though, accurate. it's very accurate. Like, man. Especially if you like just like about three dollars a pack and stuff. You yeah. talking about no, I'm talking about weed, weed too. too. <laughs> With the other smoking. Yeah. <laughs> With the other smoking. You talking about ten dollars? You know, just basic level ten dollars a day. Buy three five that's, a day. Or that's three fifty a month. Yeah. That's a car pay. That's a car, but the, then you got to add the cigarettes. Which is another hundred and fifty, maybe a, a month. That's five hundred. That's five hundred a month, and you've been doing that for twenty years. You man, you could you could do anything, but you'll be scared to invest it. Right. But you was but you would, you invested in righteous living. You invested in your to dirty your lungs. <laughs> to dirty your yeah, lungs, but you'll be scared to invest it for a chance to man. to flip it. So we just got to we got to evaluate, you know what I'm saying? We got to evaluate ourselves and evaluate uh, the resources around and, and um, just be better managers. And I say I start with myself um, with this class. Uh, poverty is a product of mismanagement. Uh, Proverbs 21, 17. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 17. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Oh wait, Pro 20, 21, 21 17. I'm, Proverbs. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Poverty is a product of mismanagement. And so we a whole nation of mis we we that's part of our culture is mismanagement. You know what I'm saying? Whether it's buying into the uh the designers or was this um you know what I'm saying? The diamonds, put you know what I'm saying, putting a hundred bragging on having a hundred thousand dollars in our mouth and don't have, you know what I'm saying, uh putting no businesses. Right. Putting up to the apartments, you know what I'm saying, with you know, with a hundred thousand dollar car. You know what I'm saying? So, um we definitely have that embedded in our culture in this society, um, just being um bad managers of resources. And this is why we are poverty nation but i think i think the tide is turning a little bit because these designers is going far left you know even though some of the people up in the music industry might go with that because the designers is coming straight skirts for men now right like i seen somebody's fall collection it was straight skirts 
and and, and plaids, and I'm like, you know, if these cats go just to have that label on. It's going to get crazy out here. Yeah, sometimes, uh, like, the fashion shows be yeah. the ex super extreme. Absolutely. Um, and uh, you'll have to probably go to, you know, you you know, you probably have to order that stuff and get it custom. The stuff usually in the store, you know, Jake Nodge is really just buying tennis shoes and maybe, you know what I'm saying, tight a T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, tight jeans. Yeah, he ain't really... But uh, it it will come. It keep playing it out. It will oh, it's come. Coming. It's, it's, it's coming. It, 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 it will be uh, a. Rappers, soon the rappers get it, that's when we start. They gonna, they, gonna, they gonna ease it in, just like them big moon boots. Yeah. You know, it, it's a little ridiculous, but eventually, um, you gonna see them this winter. When it's winter uh, pop in, you are gonna see them moon boots around. Them Uggs. Yeah, they Ugg, but they moon boots like the Versace the ones. Like, they like you. Like back in the day. The moon boots, you remember them uh, snow boots? Like they had the sole like this big. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was yeah, like yeah, a yeah. puffy pillow coat. Yeah, and it was yeah, yeah, puff, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. with a little fur on the top. Yeah, oh, they like wow. they like that big. Yeah, they had them last winter. Uh, Proverbs, where we at? Proverbs twenty one seventeen. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. All right, and so that, that righteous living, all right, that righteous living will bring you um, to working in a, a, a pig's wine. Uh, Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. I don't know if um, everybody was here when I was giving that analogy about the about the about that millionaire mindset that, and that, that, that dude who worked hard at the car wash. Mm -mm. And it, I was, I, I forgot who I was. I probably believe that the author of that Rich Dad Poor Dad. But um, they 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 pretty much brought everybody down to the same. They brought the millionaire businessman down to the same level as the hard working car wash. They and they both working at a car wash. All right. So the the one that works hard, um, it works fast, um. He's washing more cars than the than the businessman. You know what I'm saying? Because he he, he get, he's faster at you know what I'm saying at doing it. He's better at doing it. And um, you know what I'm saying the the businessman. You know they play him out to be this little short chubby dude. Uh, so he ain't really being able to wash the cars as fast, right? So if, if eventually, like the first couple of weeks, the um, the 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 faster car washer dude, more laborious, he made more money than the businessman but he was you know when he made his money he spent his money the businessman continued to hold his bread and was eating the same thing pretty much every day once the um once the about you know what i'm saying about a month go by the rich man ends up hiring somebody he ends up hiring to help him, you know what i'm saying to get some help and the dude still working by himself, you know what I'm saying, spending his money for himself. And um still washing the cars, but now this dude done caught up with him because he got the help now. Alright, and then eventually go on, go on, go on. He get more help. Alright. He ain't making the money to himself, but he getting the help and eventually he get out of not he's not working there no more. Now he got not and he got so many help help or helpers now that he's able to do vacuum the cars out now. He's actually providing more services and washing more cars. Then uh, and then eventually he ends up hiring um, the the brother who you know what I'm saying who was faster at washing the cars, etc. And it's all due to just management. You know what I'm saying? He just don't know how. And that's how they feel like if they give us reparations, they still gonna get the money back. Because we don't, we don't have, we not have mentally uh, ready for the management of those kind of resources. Go ahead, up. The only thing with giving us the money, we now have a few blacks that are know how to manage them. That, right. That if they gave it to us, they gon' they gon' yeah. They gon' pay. It, they, it's gonna, they don't want that because at one time everybody probably would have messed it up, but now you got some smart, you know, a little bit smarter. We had some time. So you got, you know, if there's no more than 10% of us that they all kind of know how, got businesses, you know, we know how to manage them. So they don't want that to get into that 10% of us, even though the other 90 will waste it and it will go right back to them. But right. it's still that 10% that's going to increase. 
they don't want none of us to increase. Right, right, right. And with and they'll speak out. And it'll be a light. That ten percent will be a light right, to absolutely. show people, hey man, this is what you need to be doing with your money, you know what I'm saying? Especially the way um, you know what I'm saying, social media and all that set up now. Um so it'll be hard and of course you still gonna have, you know, Jake gonna be Jake. Jake gonna be Jake. Jake gonna be Jake. E gonna be E. Range Rover gonna be the biggest company in the world. I, gonna I think it's gonna be them Jeeps, man. Everybody on them them Rubicons. Yeah. Them uh. Yeah, but they love them. The truck Jeep, the truck in the back of the Jeep. Yeah, that one is just because it's more expensive. They don't get that one. They probably would get that one though. But uh, a lot of them just, you know, what I'm saying, I know, I know that done climbed out. Jeep done climbed out of the hole with that, with them new Jeeps. Uh, yeah, yeah, they done climbed out with that. Um, Proverbs ten and four. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter ten and verse four. He becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand. But the hand of the diligent make it rich. All right, he become a poor with a slack hand, man. So even, you know, managing your time. You know what I'm saying? Managing your time, managing your energy. Um, you know what I'm saying? He has a, 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 a deal of a slack, a slack hand. He's going to become poor. And the hand of the diligent make it rich. Uh, Proverbs 19, 15. <coughs> It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 19 and verse 15. Slothfulness casteth into a deep sleep, and an idle soul shall suffer hunger. All right, so the, the slothfulness, again, going into slothfulness, um, being a good, taking you into a deep sleep, and you will suffer hunger if you're in an idle soul. Uh, let's look at Proverbs, chapter 6, verse 4. I know we talked about this before, about how, uh, what's called, used this and got itself locked up. Not locked up, but he got himself um, pretty much all his shows took away from Steve Harvey, which was working hard, which was managing his time um, very he efficiently. Doing too much though. That doing could be much. that could it could be seen that he been doing too much, but you know he was he was able to do it. He was uh, able to do it, man. Ain't that important to me? I'm not gonna have five jobs. He had five jobs, five jobs. But he brought this out to um, to some of his audience, and then you know what I'm saying. After that, um, I think it's some other thing that he said, but um, this kind of sparked it with him preaching to that audience um, and, and shined a light on him a little bit. Uh, Proverbs six four. It's the book of Proverbs chapter six and verse four. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a rope from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the flower, fowler. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. I right, go to the ant, consider her ways, thou sluggard, and be wise. All right, which having no guide or overseer or ruler provide of her meat in the summer. And that's leadership. But everybody ain't got that level. You know what I'm saying? I was talking to that um, other brother who was the overseer of another group. Um, sometimes we feel because we don't have to be told what to do. Um, sometimes we, you know what I'm saying, we feel like, you know what I'm saying, should be understood. You know what I'm saying? You see something that needs to be done. Uh, you do it, but you know what I'm saying. To some people, that it has to be voiced to them, um, what what they need to be doing, and that's just a form of leadership is being having that ability, like the ant, um, that knows to provide. You know what I'm saying, the meat for in the summer, and gather food for the harvest. Keep going though. How long will thou sleep, O slugger? How long will thou sleep, O slugger? Come on. When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Mm -hmm. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that trap travaileth, and thy want as an armed man. And thy want as an armed man, a little folding of the hands <laughs> uh, to sleep. 
and um and pretty much what you um uh, uh Steve Harvey said man 